Well, welcome everybody, Pariye Gak. Um, so glad to be with you. Um, it's a unique opportunity for APC to have Reverend Dr. Paul Haidostian with us. And um, we're going to get our program started today with a word of prayer. Uh, so if you would join me and bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to learn about uh, one of these unique ministries that you put in the form of a school. And we ask that you bless our time. We ask that you bless Reverend Dr. Paul and that um, this would be not only informative but also transformative for us. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite Mr. Serge Bichakchan, our MC. Thank you, Padre Joe. Can you hear me well, or is this too loud? Okay, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for attending this unique event, uh, both uh, those of you here in person, as well as those who are patched in on, uh, on the live stream on YouTube. It is YouTube, now Facebook. So we switched over to YouTube, just so you know. Um, it's, a, uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to, to be the MC. In terms of our program, uh, I will make a few comments about Haigazan University, uh, followed by Michael Voskian. And uh, then I will introduce Reverend Dr. Paul Haidostian, and um, he will go through his presentation. His presentation will be followed by uh, open Q&A, and I encourage you to ask questions. Um, the, during the, the Q&A se section, uh, the live stream will be suspended, just so you know. Um, so if you're uncomfortable in doing so here, you can do it later on during the coffee and ref refreshment uh, time in our uh, fellowship hall. For those who well, I've, I've not met yet, there, there are some, I think. Uh, my name is Serge Buchakchen, and I'm a proud alumnus of Haigazan University, and I'm a ruling elder here at APC. And those uh, who do know me, perhaps without, without the beard, which is fairly new, <laughs> and my career in aerospace and defense, I always tend to try to encapsulate everything into a context. What's the context that we're talking about? So here goes. Um, according to various uh, estimates, there are between seven to 10 million Armenians in the world. And uh, out of those, roughly about three million are in Armenia. And uh, about between one and a half to two million plus or minus here in the United States. And the balance are uh, the constitute the diaspora throughout the, the globe. Um, as the first tr uh, Christian nation, uh, Armenia is known and referred to as the land of 4,000 churches. In fact, uh, there are roughly about 500 Armenian churches outside of Armenia at this point in time, again, plus or minus. So with that as the, uh, the backdrop and, uh, and context, if you will, as most of you may know, we have one Armenian jewel of higher education, and that is Haigazan University, one. Haigazan University was founded in Beirut, Lebanon in 1955 by the Union of the Armenian Evangelical Churches in the Near East, UAE, CNE, and the Armenian Missionary Association of America, AMAA as an American style liberal arts university that emphasizes a challenging curriculum, good teacher-student relations, and leadership training and service. Haigazan is an institution of choice for students of diverse backgrounds, seeking a personalized quality academic experience that prepares them to serve their respective communities and society at large. 
And on a personal note, despite all the turmoil in Lebanon during my senior year there, um, when I had to leave for the U.S. to continue my education, Haigazian remained and still continues to be true and steadfast in its mission in building a solid foundation to thousands of students and also myself, for which I am forever grateful. So with that, uh, I invite Dr. Michael Voskian, representing the AMA, to say a few words about the, the linkage, the inseparable relationship between the AMA and Haigazian University. Michael. Thank you, Serge. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Voskian. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Armenian Missionary Association of America. I'd like to make a few remarks regarding the beautiful intertwined relationship of Haigazian University and the AMAA. From the birth of Haigazian University to the present day, both organizations have had an incredible partnership together. The year was 1954 when Mr. Avak Mehagyan and Mr. Stephen Filibosian had a meeting. What did they discuss at this meeting? They discussed starting a liberal arts college to educate Armenians and non-Armenian students. Mr. Mahagin was married to Mary, the oldest daughter of Dr. Armanag Haigazian. So on October 17, 1955, Haigazian College was founded by the Union of Armenian Evangelical Churches in the Near East and the AMAA. Funding was started by donations from the Mahagians and Stephen Filibosian. Other founding members include Reverend Dr. John Markarian, the first president, Reverend Antronig Bedigian, the first chair of the Board of Trustees, Reverend Hovanes Aharonian, the first chairman of the Board of Managers. In 1955, there were 43 students. Over the subsequent years, with a lot of hard work, Haigazian University and the AMAA grew, and they've been right there by each other's side every step of the way. Most of us have a connection to Haigazian University in one way or another. My late mother-in-law, Juliet Nazarian Tutikian, was a graduate of, ha of Haigazian College. As Haigazian University and the AMAA thrived, many people served and supported both organizations. This is evident in the Haigazian University Board of Trustees, which consists of 18 people. The trustees come from three sources. Number one, the AMAA included, uh, AMAA members, including the executive director slash CEO, Number two, the union of the, Arme of the Armenian Evangelical Churches in the Near East and its president. And number three, the president of the Philobosian Foundation. Especially noteworthy is the Philobosian Foundation, which has demonstrated unwavering support, dedication, and love to Haigazian University and the AMAA. It is absolutely beautiful to see the legacy of Stephen Philobosian carried forward by his daughter and son-in-law, Joyce and Joe Stein, and their daughter, Christina Siegel. It's abundantly clear that both Haigazian University and the AMAA would not be where they are today without the leadership and support of the Philobosian, Stein, 
and Siegel families. I'd also like to mention another connection between Haigazian University and the AMAA. Haigazian University has an endowment fund managed by the investment committee of the AMAA. I am proud to serve on this committee and currently serve as its chairman. All donations to this fund are used for the benefit and the well-being of Haigazian University. Today, Haigazian University continues to flourish with over 600 students under the excellent leadership of its fifth president, Reverend Dr. Paul Hydostian. In conclusion, the AMAA is proud of our sister organization, Haigazian University. Haigazian University is a shining star of pride for all Armenian evangelicals. May God continue to bless Haigazian University and the AMAA. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. At this time, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Reverend Dr. Paul Heisdostian. Let me say that for the sake of time management, this is an abridged, quite abridged, introduction covering his illustrious and distinguished career. Dr. Heidostian was appointed president of Haigazin University in 2002, 20 years. He received a BA in psychology from Haigazin University in 1984, a master's in divinity from the Neary School of Theology in Beirut in 1987, and a Master of Theology in 1988 and a PhD in 1994, both from the Princeton Theological Seminary. He is the chair of the Central Committee of the Union of the Armenian Evangelical Churches in the Near East, and also actively involved in leadership positions of numerous international, regional, and local educational ecclesiastical and ecumenical bodies and institutions. He also lectures, teaches, and writes in Armenian, Arabic, and English. Dr. Paul, the floor is yours. Let me uh, first thank the Armenian Presbyterian Church uh, and the AMA for this wonderful opportunity being with you. I thank Mr. Bachakja uh, for taking care of uh, so many of my needs during my travel here and uh, Mr. Voskian. Um, I think uh, the success of your committee is highly important for me. So may your endowment work and investment and so on go. Uh, very well, which will be highly critical. Um, I would like to also mention that the last time I was here, um, the day of my lecture was fine, but following my lecture, uh, we as Armenians went through uh, a difficult time. So the last time I was here and lecturing one evening was in 2014, and I spoke about Syria, the Armenians of Syria and Lebanon. Um, and then the next day, uh, the Armenian towns of Kesab, Kesab was invaded, if you remember, through the Turkish border. And I was still speaking about these issues, and then the next day, I'm still in the USA, um, and so it was a very sad, uh, sad visit uh, for me then. Needless to say, when I moved here uh, for six years plus to New Jersey, uh, I visited, uh, and I was with some of you here, uh, many times a year on Sundays. I, I would come, and uh, Reverend Karl Avakian, some of you would know, would remember, uh, also was a very hospitable person for us. 
Anyway, it's uh, great to be here and to see many of you. Thank you for coming, um, attending, and thank you for uh, watching, uh, whoever from the USA and outside the USA who has been following this presentation. Now, I know that the story of Haigazian and the work of Haigazian University is more known than many other institutions because it's a university and it has public relations work, uh, it has press releases, it has conferences. Um, and I should say that uh, in spite of all that, there is so much that most people around the world do not realize about Haigazian except for those who visit actually, uh, visit Lebanon. And I know some of you, at least on this line, often visit Lebanon and you would know uh, what happens at Haigazian. Haigazian is completing its 67th year, as Mr. Boskian said. And we do stand proud of our graduates. Uh, Haigazian degree holders, that is bachelor's and master's degrees, it's or almost 5,000 people who have a BA and, or an MA or MBA from Haigazian. Haigazian has trained thousands of teachers, thousands of teachers. In the past many years, we've been trained, in addition to our student body, we've been training more than 400 teachers in the country in our in-service teacher training program, in-service teacher training. And then many more who have done only the freshman or the sophomore year. And some of you would know in the history that uh, for many people, they would come to Agassian to do one year or two years and then move to the American University or move to the USA. So it was a, like a bridge and that was very common. When I look at the diaspora leadership, editor, editors of newspapers, school principals, uh, social workers uh, and other leaders, including religious leaders, you will hear about Haigazian in their story. The student body has ranged over the years. When I was a student, I think our number was 200 and something. Um, and, and then mostly in the past years, it's been around 600. Four faculties. The biggest faculty so far is the business and administration, but that's changing. And then the general sciences, and then social and behavioral sciences, and then the humanities. Interestingly, uh, and we can come back to this later, Social and behavioral sciences, especially psychology, and masters in clinical counseling, they are the highest demand today. And I'm glad, I don't, I don't know how it happened, but I'm glad to say that when our recruiters visit the schools, or when parents visit Haigazian, they say, um, we are here because we think Haigazian is the best in Lebanon in psychology. I don't think it has to do with the fact that I've done psychology at Haigazian. But really, we have made a name, and this is only in the past five, six years, uh, that Haigazian has become prominent in psychology and clinical counseling. It may also say something about what's happening in the world. True? The world is changing. At some point in Beirut, everyone thought doing business is the wisest thing. Because every Lebanese eventually is a business person. Uh, has to be, you know, like genetically, DNA and business and so on. Um, now we're moving to psychology. Is it because we have to handle so many neighboring countries and conflicts uh, or other global issues? Maybe. Now, as it was mentioned by Serge, being the only Armenian university outside Armenia puts a special uh, weight on our role in the world. In not, not only Armenian studies, but also in Armenian research and publications. Our institutional identity, and I'm proud to say that Haigazian in the past 67 years, despite all the losses in the country and the weaknesses in the Armenian community, Haigazian has remained true to its identity. It's obviously Christian. And yet, 50% almost Muslim student body chooses to come to Haigazian proudly, not unknowingly, but knowing what Haigazian stands for. Now, in a conversation yesterday, I was saying a student 
when I went to Aigazian, it was obvious that I would go to Aigazian. It was clear we would go to Aigazian, especially that I was going to do theology afterwards. And for Armenians, we would simply go, uncritically go. But for most non-Armenians, they would go because they want to get somewhere in their life. It's not a favor. It's not a natural thing. There are close to 50 universities in Lebanon in a small country now. Probably Haigazian is the, the smallest in size, in, in size, student body size. In Lebanon, you have new universities that already have 15,000 students, and they have just started. So it, there's, the, there's a big market, plus the Syrian uh, displaced situation, right? More than a million, million and a half from Syria who came in. Um, however, Haigazian has maintained its identity, which also has always emphasized the Armenian identity, and in fact, Haigazian is also known to be representing Armenian literature, culture, history, and Armenian causes, not only in Lebanon, but also in the region. Living in a religiously and politically tense world and tense region in Lebanon, highly tense, you know, I don't need to tell you. Haigazian has maintained a Christian mission of peace, service, and faith. And these specific points have been appreciated by Christians and non-Christians alone. This, uh, despite all the, uh, in spite of all the differences. While being, as I said, one of the smallest size universities, the impact of Haigazian kept growing. And it's not easy for me to tell you what impact we have. We do. Our board knows. The, the, the wider impact we have. Uh, and I can easily say, especially in the past 10 to 12 years, uh, our impact on not only the Armenian community, but on, on Lebanon as such has increased. And uh, most visitors to Aigazian from Lebanon also are surprised when they hear about our smaller, relatively small numbers. They say, well, we've known about Aigazian for so long. You're one of the older ones, you're this and that and so on. So the size is kind of small. Existing with the oldest and largest universities in Beirut has not been a hindrance for Aigazian, as we have maintained our high standards and the supportive institutional atmosphere. Um, one of the interests I have is the exit interview, exit survey that students do before graduating. You know, uh, there is an online survey they do. Over the past years, they all, all, always emphasize two points. One, high academics, because no one would graduate from Haigazan with what in Lebanon would be called wasta, or special connections, or friendships, or bribery, which, by the way, exists in so many countries of the world. I am not here to tell you that, but uh, corruption is global. Huh? It's not only one or two countries, and Lebanon and so on. So they know high academics. It means if you got an 80 at Haigazan, you deserve an 80. And I know what this means. <coughs> I'm sorry. The second point which students in the exit survey say that they have always appreciated is what they call family atmosphere. Now, for those of you, and all of you know Lebanon, what family atmosphere? It's a country of conflicts, divisions, wars, civil strife militant uh, competition, uh, belonging and uh, allegiance to foreign powers. This is part of Lebanon. Now, what do they mean by family atmosphere? Family atmosphere for them means that at Haigazian on campus, and I'm not exaggerating, literally so, people in some way succeed in putting aside all the differences that they have, political, religious, and ethnic, and so on. To the, to, the, to the extent that I've often said, if it's working, and I've said this to politicians in Lebanon, if this is working at Haigazian, then it should be working outside. Why is it not working in the wider circles in Lebanon? Because if you, if you do certain things, apparently it works. Um, and I can, uh, I'll show uh, something uh, about this uh, later on. Now, all of this is happening in the midst of struggles and challenges 
of historical proportions. To let me list a few. Financial and budgetary crunches and difficulties. Student, faculty, and staff morale issues, not only at Haigazian, but all over the place. I mean, I will not say what the problems in Lebanon are because I think you all know what the problems are. But morale is a very big problem nowadays. And you cannot normally function in a university without high morale. And this is an issue. Increasing difficulty in maintaining and recruiting qualified faculty and staff, so if some of them retire, where are you going to get the new faculty from? Uh, people who studied in Europe or Canada or the USA, will they move back to Lebanon? Will they say, I'll start my teaching career in Lebanon? Highly, highly doubtful. Another problem is the need for research funds, scholarship funds, and capital funds. Often we think about uh, uh, institutions in terms of money for scholarships, so we allow them to study, we make them study, help them study. But I want you to know the following uh, about Haigazian. Haigazian, dear friends, is a uni university. A university doesn't simply need money for students to pay tuition. A university that competes with others should also compete in conferences, publications, research, various studies, but also maintaining high standards in terms of the capital uh, expenditures, the facilities, and the buildings. Oh, a few years ago, the Lebanese state television, Tele Liban, prepared a very nice documentary. If you know Arabic, or even if you don't, I think it's on Google, it's on Tele Liban. In Arabic, it says, the stones speak. Al Hajar Bteki, the stones can speak. This was a program on Tele Liban that talks about structures and buildings and their history and the meaning. And uh, Hjar Abtahki dedicated uh, half an hour a program on the buildings of Aigazian, where we tell the story uh, of Aigazian. Lots of people watched it. Okay, they said it's beautiful, it's this, it's that, and so on. And yet, one very common comment I heard was that Oh, the place is so clean, so well maintained. I, I, I never thought that would be a comment. Of course you should clean it. Um, uh, but I'm glad for those of you who are familiar with uh, Rue Mexique, uh, Mexique Street, Cher uh, Al Mexique. Um, and then uh, we have uh, the parallel streets are Justinien and the other one, Maizide. When you come to Mexique Street, it's cleaner. Why? Because we're there. I mean, I think that's a testimony. And uh, by the way, uh, later on, check out this Lahjar uh, Tahki, the Stone Speak on Tele Liban, dedicated to Taigaz, and it was a wonderful program. The general Lebanese failures have been putting high pressure on us. Okay, there are global crises. There are the crises of Armenia. And here in this church, in an Armenian um, generally Armenian uh, audience, I would say that the issues of Armenia are highly important for the Middle Eastern Armenians. Uh, people wholeheartedly in Lebanon follow what happens in Armenia. I know all around the globe, but in Lebanon, imagine after the Beirut blast of August 2020, by a month and a half, we had the war, Artsakh war. For some people whose homes were destroyed, what happened in Artsakh weighed heavier than the fact that they lost their home in Beirut. This is a major issue, and it's part of the Lebanese-Armenian identity as well. So all these pressures, plus the weaker role Armenians play in the general atmosphere, in the general sphere of Lebanon. Now, these challenges surround Haigazian, and many more challenges are there. Are these challenges and difficulties equal to failure or decapitation? 
while all these crises were taking place, I'm proud to say that Haigazian University was not only keeping its academic program via online programs, Zoom and Moodle and other uh, course management systems, but we were also doing some of the following that I will uh, repeat later on. I mean, I will come to it a bit later now. But let me say a few words about the Armenians in Lebanon, and then I'll move to what we did at Aigazian. So when we uh, look at, oh, let me go back. So le when I look at the Armenian Lebanon, should we say, we're now talking about 16 schools. Some of the schools in Lebanon are from kindergarten to high school, to baccalaureate. So today it's about 16 schools because a number of them merged. We have a number of programs with, for special education, so they're not regular schools, but they do special needs, children's programs and so on. We have at least eight and maybe up to 10 social, socio-medical, uh, medical or relief organizations that uh, work very closely with the community. And I'm glad the, the Genetian uh, executive director is here with us today from in the USA here, out of the USA. We have the Armenian media, we have the daily newspapers, we have radio, and we have many news sites and news websites out of Lebanon in the Armenian language. You know the political organizations and political parties. You know that the Armenian churches, uh, apostolic, orthodox, and evangelical, also have their religious training institutions in Lebanon. So they're not simply churches that are functioning, but they train the leadership of the churches in Lebanon. On the evangelical side, I'm also happy to say that with the AMAA, over the years, over the past years, we've managed to uh, host uh, people from Armenia who want to prepare as ev Armenian evangelical ministers to serve in Armenia. They are from Armenia. Now, this year we have three who are doing their Master of Divinity at the Niri School of Theology. And uh, so Lebanon is also still a center of training Armenian religious servants uh, in the various churches. When you talk about Lebanon and the Armenian Lebanon, you're talking about uh, Armenian-speaking neighborhoods and shopping regions still. You're talking about political representation in the parliament and the government. You're talking about hundreds of monuments. When I say monument, it could be a plaque, it could be a statue, it could be something else, but they are all over the country. We're talking about a rich uh, publication work, press publications, printed presses, a number of museums, a number of Armenian libraries, Armenian bookstores, and of course, we're talking about Armenian cultural, youth, scouts, theatrical, athletic organizations, art centers. Okay, fine. Are they as strong as they were 20 years ago? No. But what is? Where? I mean, uh, um, allow me to say, uh, sometimes when we speak about the Middle East, we act like the rest of the world is doing so well, and then the Middle East is struggling. I, I mean, I don't want to go into this, but at the end, pure question and answer, I will be very uh, candid about some of these issues if you, as, as much as you, you like, so I can move in that direction. So, so far, this is the Armenian Lebanon. It is weaker, yes. It has lots of struggles, yes, but it's there. And then I will repeat the same thing at the end, and I'll say it here. So is there hope for these to continue? And my perspective over the past years has been the following. Anyone who wants to do church work and education work and cannot maintain hope and a good plan for the future, let them not serve education and the church. Let them do something else. The same applies to Armenian politics, by the way, if you ask me. Anyone who doesn't have a plan, anyone who doesn't have hope, anyone who doesn't have the dedication, let them step aside, let others do the job for them. Um, this is an important issue. Uh, we have to be people of hope, not baseless hope. We have to have a plan, but we have to move forward. 
Now, the economic challenges of Lebanon currently are suffocating, but I will not give all the details. It's been very difficult. Uh, it's been very difficult for institutions, but I believe that for individual families, it's been very difficult. Um, people have struggled uh, to maintain uh, the level in their life of the very basics, very basics. Things like electricity, insurance, petroleum for their car. I mean, very basic things, education and so on. Now, let me move on. Uh, I will not dwell on all the problems of Lebanon, but let me move on to some Haigazi University developments. When all these struggles were taking place and where everything was failing, money failing, politics failing, security failing, petroleum failing, COVID failing us, Armenian issues uh, having, uh, imposing whatever uh, limitations and difficulties for us in Lebanon, Haigazian continued its work. And as I said, Haigazian was not simply and is not simply giving BAs and MAs to its students. We were through our continuing education program, teacher training, adult education, inter-religious dialogue, we were doing so much. And in this list, I'm not including everything, um, but uh, later on I can expand. So I'll give some examples. So we know what does this university do other than giving the courses, the hundreds of courses every semester. One is called HECD. HECD, we signed a partnership agreement with uh, EDC, Education Development Center. It's an implementer of USAID's Higher Education Capacity Development Program. HECD is a five-year USAID program for developing uh, capacity in the institutions and so on. And they, uh, they have an, a, a good partnership with us now. Uh, we have courses added on our curric curriculum. Uh, it's called Work Ready Now. Uh, Work Ready Now is an additional course that students take to prepare for the career, for their careers. And the other important issue is that they are currently assisting our university to establish a student career center. Student career center, it will serve through student life, uh, the student life department. And I'm glad to say that in two weeks time, two of our staff will be traveling, funded by USAID to Florida uh, in order to get one week of training uh, in the Florida State University or one of the Florida universities uh, in, in order to establish a career center. Another important issue recently is the IACBE accreditation. This is for business programs, international business programs. Now, Haigazian is a fully respected and accredited university by the Ministry of Higher Education in Lebanon, highly regarded, and our students continue their education globally wherever they may go. However, to add ad accreditation programs internationally will you know, uh, help our students further. And it will give us, you know, a, a, a different standing in the world. So in early 2022, uh, we decided to apply for IACBE accreditation uh, and uh, for business education. And this is uh, going smoothly. And I'm also thankful that uh, the USAID is also supporting us financially in this project. Uh, this accreditation project. Hopefully, this will take a maximum of, of two years and our business programs will be accredited by, by them. The next one that I'm, I've been personally very proud of is called the UNESCO Program for Inclusive Education for Special Children, uh, Special Needs Children in the Lebanese Schools. So there was an agreement signed between Haigazi University and the Ministry of Higher Education in Lebanon and education. With the support of UNICEF, I believe it was Canada, the Canadian government funded it in 2020, February. So Haigazian University was chosen to serve as consultants for the Lebanese plan and new laws on inclusive education for special needs children in the regular schools. So conducting baseline analysis of inclusive education, 
providing an ongoing documentation of this program, compiling a set of documented lessons learned, highlighting the program's challenges, strengths. Uh, so this is for the public schools in Lebanon. And they, we, we were working with 30 public schools in Lebanon and we're monitoring what's happening and that uh, cover of a book that you see uh, here uh, is actually a printed report. Uh, it was prepared by Haigazian University, by our faculty. Um, this I've been, I've been so proud of uh, reading. Uh, so as, as you say, I'm giving you some examples of how Haigazian is keeping busy in these times of trouble. Now I want to move a bit Armenian, a bit more Armenian. Recent developments at Haigazian University and its publications. And after this slide, we will also watch a minute, a minute and a half uh, small video. As we speak, there are five publications that are being prepared. Within a few months, they should be out. One is the centennial of Greater Lebanon, Lubnan al-Kabir. Uh, the idea of a Lebanese identity perspectives from the Lebanese arts and letters. This, was, this is a proceedings of symp a symposium organized by Haigazian and the AUB. And we are publishing the proceeding, proceedings. I think if I checked my email right two days ago, we received this. This is already printed. The second one is the editorials of Vahan Tekeyan, published in Arab from 1915 to 1945. This book should come out in March. The Armenians of Egypt, Proceedings of Conferences Organized in Cairo and Beirut in uh, 2018. This is within two months. The Haigazian Armenological Review, Volume 42, since 1970. This year I'm proud to announce that this year we will start issuing two volumes per year. We're talking about 800 pages of original Armenian research. Uh, Half of the researchers are from Armenia, the rest are from the diaspora, including the USA. And we're moving from one issue a year into two issues a year. We're doing that because we have lots of things to publish. Number two, in order for us to compete with other non-Armenian studies journals globally, uh, to have two publications a year is also a must. So it is like a, an upgrade of your standards. Now, uh, if we may uh, do the next video, this is supposed to be a video. It was such a joy to add publications and Haigazian University Press to the Haigazian University reality. Since its inception in 2011, Haigazian University Press has published 40 volumes which constitute almost 10% of whatever has been published in the Lebanese uh, Armenian community in the same period in the last decade. Out of these 40 volumes, 10 volumes of the Haigazian Armenological Review. We have another seven volumes, the proceedings of conferences held at Haigazian University and organized by the Haigazian University. Another 10 volumes are dedicated and related to the Armenian genocide. Some four volumes are related to the history of the Lebanese Armenians a volume is related to the history of the Musada Armenians and a few other. And last but not least, a volume related to the thoughts, concepts and ideas of the Armenian University students, both in Beirut and the United States. The Haigazian University Press added such value to the academic stature of our university. On the one hand, this is cause for celebration. On the other hand, it needs support, financial, moral, and academic. So we count on your support. All right, so this gives you an idea of uh, what's happening uh, with HU Press. Now, uh, it's been only 11 years. Uh, Haigazian has, been, has published books before, but it, would, it was always Haigazian, a Haigazian University publication. Uh, when uh, you are an H. Haigazian University Press, uh, then it's more established, it's recognized by the authorities in Lebanon. Uh, so when there are book fairs, you can participate. Uh, when you want to ship books outside the country, you have 
the permit to ship them as a as a I guess as a university press. So um, it added so much uh, to us, and that was Dr. Antranik Dakesian, who's the director of the Armenian Diaspora Research Center and takes care of the publications as well. Uh, that center, the Armenian Diaspora Research Center, is also uh, very active in doing research, but also conferences. And in our uh, conferences, uh, we are looking at the following now. Transition and transformations in the Armenian space and their impact on Armenian identity in collaboration with the Kachadura Bovian Pedagogical Mangavarjagan University History Department, hopefully the last week of June 2022 in Armenia. And then Armenia, the Arab states, and the Middle East Armenian diaspora, historic relations, current concerns, and prospects between September and October 2022 with uh, the Oriental Institute of the National Academy of Sciences in Armenia. Uh, and uh, Armenians in the Arab Gulf states, this is the last of a series of conferences we did on the various countries of the Middle East. Um, so we do the conference, and then two or three years afterwards, we, you know, uh, the proceedings and additional papers and additional research is done, and we have a publication. Um, we, we do also have uh, educational outreach within Lebanon and sometimes with Armenia. Workshops for Lebanese Armenian school students uh, we have done over the years many times. We have done for teachers and for students. But one nice example for April, that is in two months' time, I think I want to participate in that. It's workshops over one week for Lebanese Armenian school students on Armenian rug ornaments. So two people will come from Armenia, from the Hovannes Sharambeyan Armenian Folk Museum in Yerevan, and they will come and uh, so we will have uh, certain age groups and we will, each one will do a design of an Armenian rug. So our way of commemorating April 24 this year will be by teaching Lebanese Armenian kids um, these. So it will be, uh, each one of them will take home uh, one small piece. I think once we do it, uh, the next year, adults will come and register and they will want to have one on their own. Okay, so the, I'm, I'm just giving some examples and hopefully in August, September, we will do workshops for Armenian history teacher, teachers of Lebanese Armenian schools in collaboration with another, um, with an, an educational NGO in Yerevan. I should say that we cooperate very closely with Armenia and many institutions in Armenia, the last of which was uh, signing of uh, the agreement with uh, Mangavar Jagan, the pedagogical university, but we continue to work with many others, especially the Oriental Institute in the Academy of Sciences. If you ask me about COVID, COVID is still in Lebanon. Uh, per day, we have 1,500, 1,800 additional positive cases, but we've been open since October, fully open, um, because 98%, 99% uh, of our students, faculty and staff were vaccinated. And so in Lebanon, it wasn't politicized. No one cared whether they would go crazy, whether someone in England would control their life. And so these issues were not there. Uh, people, we said, okay, there's a vaccination plan. And we did. And uh, for... 50% of the AUB and 50% of the Haigazian students, uh, Mr. Rafi Manukian, the philanthropist, he covered the expenses of all these uh, uh, Pfizer uh, vaccines. So that went well and uh, so forth. Now, in uh, terms of the critical needs, let me do this final section on critical needs. I just gave you an idea of what we do, right? other than doing the BAs and MAs and so on and so forth. We do have many critical needs, but the critical needs start by taking care of our students first. Because what is a university without its students? Now, note we are in Lebanon, and we know what's happening in Lebanon. In Lebanon, we are playing the role of parents to our students. 
if you want me to prove this, I'll show you a three minute video. And by the way, I just noticed Sevag Ketenjan just arrived, right? Sevag, raise your hand so they know who you are. Till a year ago, Sevag Ketenjan is a champion, a Lebanese Armenian basketball champion. Now he has moved to your city uh, or your uh, New York and New Jersey. And Sevag was our student life office sports director. So he worked with the students and now he is in, in the USA. So take good care of Sevag for us. So let's watch if possible. What, uh, what do we do with our students and what happens? Watch this. Why am I a Haigazian student? Haigazian University emphasizes student leadership. Leadership means academics, social life, interaction, communication, and teamwork. It is a value system. Haigazian is a cozy place that makes you feel like you belong. It is a place that supports your growth and motivates you to be devoted to your work. As a senior student at Haigazian University, I would like to appreciate and express my gratitude to Haigazian for all the trials and ups and downs that we have come through. They always gave us the positive feedback and the opportunity to express ourselves. What makes Haigazian University very special is the ability and the elements of truth, freedom and service that it provides to the students who walk within the walls of this university to prepare them to become the next leaders and the dream achievers of the next generation of this world. Do you think you are running around leaving scars, collecting your joy fight? Young University creates the atmosphere for the students to grow academically, but also in relation to the others who are very different. They are diverse. This diversity helps us to discover new and unique ways of thinking from different kinds of people and people from completely different backgrounds. Hagazia has given me a place to test the limits and meet a lot of wonderful people. The student experience at Haigazian University includes not only serious academics, but also the campus atmosphere, an atmosphere of cooperation, understanding, patience, teamwork. When you walk through the gates, you feel like coming home, surrounded by people whom you can count on and lean on. For me, this community is my second family. That's right, Peter, old Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. I was offered an opportunity to join a religious pluralism workshop funded by the U.S. Department of State. As a loving family does, Haigazian so generally supported me through it. Haigazian University celebrates the fact that in a tense world, in Lebanon, it creates a family atmosphere with multi-purpose activities and reality. And it's for that reason I can confidently say that I love Haigazian, and I can even confidently say that Haigazian even loves us, this relationship being built on love and uh, growth together. The values of Haigazian will live through me, and I will be carrying the torches of truth, freedom, and service wherever I go. So we posted, posted this on Facebook yesterday. Actually, I timed it such that it's not too much earlier than this presentation. So they posted yesterday. You know what I noticed under, under the, uh, the comments section? Students and faculty are competing by saying 100% true, 100% true. And I think 40 some people have already shared it in one day um, because they owned it. They owned the story. Now. Uh, this, this was, by the way, we didn't tell them what to say. It, it feels like someone gave them the texts, right? Like, you should say this, like the president will say this, follow it by this and so on. They just, the video people went and they spoke and then he put it uh, all together. This was like uh, three weeks ago. Now, as I said, in a tense world, in a world with no hope, with no plans, um, for most Armenians and also most Middle Easterners and many, many Americans, the future is not promising, I know. 
But so what's your plan? The plan is education. Just what's the other plan? It's education. What's the third plan? It's education. Now education based on value systems, whatever we're trying to give. There are, as I said, many critical needs. And many of these I listed for Haigazian. Now one of them is financial aid for students, scholarships. There's no way 90% of our students can cover anything in their tuition. No way. There's no way. Uh, I, I don't want to give examples of what happened. But people lost not only the value of the currency, 90% of the value of the currency. So their salaries lost 90% of their value. But people also lost the money they have in the bank. They have no access to, even if they were, even if they had $20 million in the bank, they have no access to the $20 million in the bank. So it's useless. So everyone needs scholarships. And that's an important issue. However, as I said, we also have research work, publications, facilities upgrades, and we should have emergency funds for whatever could happen still in the world. And that's where the endowment comes. And I'm, I'm, I haven't seen, I will uh, again candidly say here, I haven't seen too many people, including Haigazian, in their will, in the bequests, not many. Uh, and I think we should not be shy talking about this, uh, and not only scholarships for needy students, which are highly important, but all the projects are important, including the endowment. Now, I have, as I said, uh, I think Dr. Rara, I was saying, maybe you weren't here, 2014 when I was here, the next day, Kesab was invaded. I don't know what happens tomorrow in the world. Do you? I don't know. I hope good things happen. But chances are, many more bad things will happen. So a university like Aigazian, an institution as critical as Aigazian for everyone, has to be ready for all sorts of emergencies. We as Armenian people should have learned this, should learn this, maybe we have learned it, but we should be ready for emergencies and stay strong when emergencies hit us. In order to stay strong, the endowment, financial endowment, moral endowment, faith endowment, emotional endowment, these have to be in place. I'm, uh, I, I'm also proud to say that our vision is not for Haigazian alone. It's for all those people around us. It's for the whole Lebanese society. It's for the Armenian diaspora, but it's for Armenia as well. As uh, a closing, I would say the following. It is important to help the needy people get food but it is important for structures to remain strong so that they may provide food for the people. So if the Armenian foundations, if their educational systems fail, if the churches fail, then who is going to distribute the, 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 the food, the parcel, the funds, the medications, the opportunities? So the structures have to keep strong to educate, to prepare, to equip, and then to reach out to all in the community. Worrying about the future. Do I have, do I have hope for whatever, Lebanon or others? I think in this world, hope is a useless word. In this world. This world is a world of materials, politics, pressure, power, opportunity, growth, failure, success. All these are there. You, so worrying about the future and saying there's no hope is not an answer. It's not an accepted answer. For us, for me personally, the question is, this is the situation now. It could get better or worse. What am I to do now? What is my role? What is it that I can contribute in a positive way? Uh, this is the Christian response. Hopefully, this is the Armenian response. This is the Haigazian response. And with that note, um, I will end it here. And then later on, we will have some hopefully kindly challenge me with all sorts of questions. And I thank you again for your uh, good attention. Thanks so much.